Right, I'm putting an Apex one on next then. At least we've had a practice. <laughs> How easy is it to replace the timing chain on a Hyundai i10? Well, we're soon about to find out. This is my mum's 2015 Hyundai. She's owned it for about three years and it's making a funny old noise from the engine bay when running. Dad thinks the timing chain has stretched and needs replacing. In this video, we'll have a chat with Dad, have a chat about him, why he thinks that it needs doing, find out how much it's gonna cost and start to do the process. You're turning I'm, it to silent, are you? I'm just blocking my stockbroker. Right then. Hello, good day. How are you doing? Now How's then, my aunt. You all right? Running good, thank you. Uh, it's a bit cold and windy here in Lincoln. It's not so bad in the shed, is it? We are with Mum's Hyundai i10. Yes. We are going to replace the timing chain. Yes. The question I have for you, first and foremost, is why? Well, it's making an horrible little shush, 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 shush noise. All right, okay. Let's have a look on the Hyundai here. forums, they're not very forthcoming. So this is the K1 litre series we'll engine. Up. And it's making a noise, and one would think it is a blinking belt. Okay. So let's have a listen. But you take the belt off and it still does it. So I can hear a chunk, 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 chunk. Yeah, it's got worse actually. When you first could hear it, you would have sworn that was a belt. So that noise... Now it does sound mechanical. So that noise that we can hear... You can't hear it through there. We think is the timing chain. I hope it is. I've been to see a Hyundai master technician and he rubbed his chin and says, I don't know. Right. But probably hadn't been doing it for a long while. According to the reception lady, she says, oh, they rattle like mad when they've gone. Well, it's not rattling like mad. It's making a noise. But it is making a noise. So you've done some diagnostics and you've taken a belt off. I've took the belt, the auxiliary drive belt off and it still does and it. And it still does it, which tells us that it's probably something in the engine. Um, okay, so... so we're going to replace the timing belt. Yeah, worst case scenario is though it's the variable valve timing things, but I don't think it is. What we're going to do by replacing the chain, can it make it worse? <laughs> no. <laughs> so we're not running the risk of breaking mum's car. Um, how uh, many miles has the car done? 70 odd, isn't it? 70 odd thousand. thousand. It's got worse since we've owned it. And it's a 15 plate car, so it's nearly 10 years old. Would you expect that to be an acceptable level of replacing the timing chain on a car? 70,000 miles? In my day, mate, they used to last the longer for the car. Yes, yes, indeed. So you've bought a kit. Yes. Let's go have a look at the kit. So you've bought a Napa yeah, timing chain there's two chain sorts. Kit. There's either an Apex one or a Napa. Yep. The Napa was a bit dearer. We've had Napa stuff before and it's yep. all right, isn't it? Okay, so how much was this kit? 80 odd quid. 80 odd pounds. Yeah. And in the kit you get a chain, of yep. course. I've got marked links, look, for you know to time it up. Lovely. What's this? There's the guides. Yep. Okay. Chain. And what's in the box? Grease? Tensioner. Oh, a tensioner. You can get a kit with the top pulleys on, but they're not actually just pulleys, they're uh, variable valve timing things. Okay. What that, else that have you That brings bought? the price up to 250 quid, that's 80 odd quid. Blimey. What else have you bought? Oil, fully what? synthetic. Let's have a look. Oh, 5W40 manual. A3B4. Uh, from eBay? Yes. Car parts for less? Carousel car parts. Carousel car parts. Yeah, they, they trade, I found three different names for the same firm under eBay. Yeah, well, why wouldn't you? And also, then I suddenly thought, Christ, they're getting some bad feedback now. Oh, are they? Yeah, which shocked me. It does shock had, me. Because we've been using them, haven't we? Carousel car two parts. Two of the direct, so then you go on company's house and two of the directors are not directors anymore and another person's a director. Oh, sold. And then you see, that they've had a charge put on them, so basically someone has loaned them some money. Ah, okay, fair That's enough. The, the latest thing that happened is they've been loaned some money, so probably selling stuff so cheap comes <laughs> at a price. Uh, they were an absolute bargain. Yeah, absolutely. So how much was that? Like oh, 10 I bought quid? two bottles for 35 quid. Yeah, Bar bonkers, isn't it? Yeah, bonkers. One bottle at Euros is that. Yeah, and what else have you bought? You've bought some, is it HT Leeds you've got there? No, no. What's, this? what's this? Durko. Oh, Durko, right, so that's your... Um, hang on a minute now, I'm going to get it right. 
anaerobic sealant. No, it's not, is it? It's high temperature silicon, isn't it? <laughs> So I tell you, this is the stuff we use on the Audis and that. Ah, right? not, not the stuff we use on Rover 75s. No. And a man oil filter. We're going to do the oil filter yeah, change I, as well. So I paid twice as much for the oil filter yep. than what you would do. Okay, fine. Mum is telling us that it's cup of tea time. It is. We'll have a cup of tea and uh, then we'll start then. So first port of call is going to be stripping it down and getting to it. What yeah. I'll do before we get there, I'm going to let you explain the process. I don't know, I've never done one before. And then we'll, um, well, you're not going in blind. Surely you've got some instructions. No, I shall keep my eyes open. <laughs> Surely you've got some instructions, though. We'll have well, a... I have. I've got a little record. I've bought a record with the instructions mm. on. Well, we'll, we'll not, have a chat about it's not that. not ever so good. In uh, just a minute. We'll have tea first. Tea up. Right, cup of tea over. That was good. Good cup of tea. Um, let's talk about the process yes, then, of replacing a timing chain. Um, I'm guessing you've done many timing chains in your uh, actual career, oh. but um, how do you know what to do? Um, you got a Haynes manual or what? No, I bought one of them records off the internet. A CD or? Yes. Uh, so the CD has arrived. Yes. What has the CD set us back? £5.50 plus the delivery, so it's £6.50. Okay, and what have you learnt from the from the disc? Well, it's not ever so good, really, but it's got the basic details. I've got my torque wrench settings, shows me the timing marks, which I'd already worked out from watching some... <laughs> there was an Indian gentleman on the old uh, YouTubes. Uh, so you've already watched a YouTube video on yeah. how to do it. Well, we might as well stop making this now. Uh, just talk us through it quickly, then. What's the process? How do we do it? <laughs> Air filter off, rocker cover off, alternator chucked forward, air conditioning compressor chucked forward, pulleys off. It says you take the water pump off. Okay, we haven't got a new water pump. No, I'm going to put it back on. Okay. Uh, disconnect the battery first, uh, wheel off, under tray off, engine mounting off, support the engine, and take that front pulley off, take the cover off, and see what we've got. What do you estimate that to be, time-wise, if we were doing it in a real-world scenario I the and foggiest not talking about on YouTube? I don't know, really. Okay. I don't blinking well know, but we'll soon find out. <laughs> so part one, then, is going to be the starting to strip it down. Let's go. I'll tell you what, do you know what I'm going to do? Hello. I'm going to time us. Oh. So it is now, let's have a look, it's now... 10 to 5 on a Sunday we... evening, so we won't get it all done tonight. We're not going to get a lot done. But it's uh, 10 to 5 on a Sunday evening, so we'll start the process now. So first port of call then, yeah. air filter needs to come off. Yeah, film One, it all so I know what I'm, how to put it back together. <laughs> off comes the battery. Do, do, do. Oh, what's round the back? It's on a grommet, grommet, yeah. Out it comes. Now we can see, yeah, as you say, the rabbit, the top of the engine. Uh, oh, all them injectors. Take off. Yes, there's a lot of stuff in there, yeah, actually. Isn't that's there? a bit in the way, isn't there? That's quite annoying. We're going to make a noise in a minute, so you better stop filming. We're going to blow that muck off with the airliner. What's the plan? We're blowing all this dust and dirt yeah. off. So we don't get it in the engine. In the engine? So we've blown all that off, now it's time to take some bits yeah, off. What's going on here? Oh dear. Oh. It's tight, wasn't it? That was a power pose. Just Out come the uh, the plug top coils, and you're putting the screws I am, yeah. back in the holes. Why are you doing that? So, I'm not stood scratching my head where it all goes when I'm putting it back together. Next port of call is remove these connectors. This one's got a little tag on, so it needs a little pick to carefully remove that. What is it you've just taken off there? Wires to the variable valve timing solenoid. You mentioned earlier that if it's not the timing chain, it could be something to do with the VVC. What, what is that? I hope it's nothing to do with the variable valve timing gears. I don't know yet. I don't jolly well know. We could be wasting our time. So, a few people uh, on, on the internet yes. have commented saying, John, why are you um, doing a timing chain replacement on a car that's only done 70,000 miles? Yeah. Um, there's a couple of people who have said that, you know, these will go over 100,000 miles. Yeah. 
We're not 100% certain it's the timing chain that's causing us the little tick, 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 tick. It's coming from that neck of the woods, and if you take the belt off, it's gone. So. It is. But also, we don't know the history of the car, do we? It, it could have been neglected from an oil change perspective. Um, and why would a, an oil change neglection damage that timing chain? Timing chains, modern timing chains, are a bit quaint about uh, oil changes. So we don't know the history of the car. We haven't got a major service history with it. It's been through main dealers most of its life, but yeah. that, that doesn't mean anything nowadays, sadly. And I understand from what I've looked on forums, there is a known fault with funny little noises from under one litre timing chains. Well, there we go. But it's very vague, and it's the same thing with a Kia. It appears Kias have a similar problem. And it's the same, it's not detrimental to the vehicle. But this is definitely whatever it's doing is getting worse. And I've had a poke through the top and it doesn't look as though it's stretched. You just said something really interesting there in that you actually don't know what you're doing, i.e. you've never done uh, any work on a Hyundai i10 before. No. Are the engines very similar to things you've worked on in the past? It's not so much that. When you're familiar with something, you know exactly which bits to be taken off. Yes. And you know how they come off. And you're not that familiar. No. Sorry. But it's not, you've not looked at it and thought, oh Christ, I've got no idea what I'm doing yet. Engines is engines, aren't they? Engines is engines. So the rocker cover needs to come off now. That's the next port call. The workshop manual says the engine does not have to be removed to do this. No, because it's quite a small space in there. Yeah. That's what the workshop manual said. Well, thankfully, no, we're not taking the engine out then. No. Although that would give me an excuse to use my engine crane that we've never used. Have you bought a new gasket for the no, rocker cover? I have not. They're six million pounds. <laughs> They're that expensive, are no, they? I want to see if I can get away with it. If not, I'll just have to buy one. Go buy one, can't I? Not on there. In theory, that should now be free. No, because there's more bolts in the middle. Aha! Don't forget the bolts in the middle. Here it comes. Sounds better, doesn't it? Now she's off. Oh. Engine. The gasket has stayed there, and it can jolly well stay there for now. So the gasket's what stayed on the block, has it? Head. Oh yeah, head on the head. Yes, and it can stay there. Wow, that's a beautiful engine. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? Engines are us. See, that's not loose. My concern is these things making a noise. So just while we, now we've got that cover off, let's have a look at everything. These are obviously your cams. Interestingly, it says Kia on the cam. Can you see? It does, doesn't it? Uh, we've obviously got, what are these, the valves? Or the bores? Plugs. Plugs. Camshaft. Camshaft, yeah. There's the cam followers. Yep. And the valves are underneath. Yeah. And these are the variable valve timing things. So how do these work then? What do these Solid do? Th they change the valve timing for different engine revs. Right. And that chain obviously sits on those sprockets. My concern is it's these that's making the noise. Okay. Why uh, would they make a noise? I don't know. Because on a Renault, they go... <laughs> When you first start them up, if they're faulty, they're controlled by these solenoid valves. Which changes the valve timing according to revs. What's this sticking out here? Just don't know. <laughs> I did notice it. It's some sort of spring some thing. Some sort of spring-loaded pin. See, that could be something like that. The worst case scenario is we don't fix it, but it's not as though we're spending all of our life doing it, is it? No. Just a day or two. Right, well... So now we're going to see... Show me that engine. I'm going to jack it up now. And I'm going to take that wheel off. If we're wasting our time, we're wasting our time. What are you filming me for? Because what, what am I filming you for? Yeah. Because uh, I've had a good look at this beautiful engine, and it is beautiful. But um, I want to know why you're taking the wheel off now. Is it so you can manually set the, uh, the engine... I'm going to take it to bits from under there. Oh, are you? That's really what I'm going to be doing, Gromit. 
that's what I'm hoping to do anyway. I'm in love with the engine. I think it's beautiful. I'm in love with your engine. Hey, look at my engine. <laughs> Flipping heck, you're trying to tip that over. Engine. Axle stands in place, of course, because safety. Next port of call, take the wheel off. What's the next port of call? Wheel off, under tray off, crank pulley off, and then, well, not loosen the crank pulley nut, to be fair. Look after your wheel trims, boys and girls. Yeah, stick it back on my wheel, Gromit, please. Rapids? Yeah. That's what was on it when you bought it. Those are shiny nuts. Oh. Shiny, shiny nuts. 10 mil, 10 mil. Bonus interior content. Bonus Molinos. Off comes the under tray. Yeah, it's slightly like a side one, isn't it? Dirty. Right, so actually, uh, that was a dirty light. It wasn't an under tray, it was this sort of side tray. And uh, now we've taken that off. Amateurish in the flipping extreme. What? what? <laughs> we can see these pulleys, which we need to uh, loosen. WTF. So why do you need to loosen that nut? I've got to take that pulley off, mate. And why do you need to take the pulley off? Because the pulley is stopping me getting that cover off. In fact, the correct term is a panel side cover right hand. And it doesn't say Kia on it. I know you're concentrating, but what I is am. that special tool that you've put on the end there? To hold this thing. So this could come off. This it's could a stretch bolt. cause a problem. It's a stretch bolt, so it'll be fairly tight. I don't think it'll be that much of a problem. So that needed two of us to do that job. Um, basically, we used this tool that you've made yeah, just to, uh, to hold it in place, the, the wheel in place. Fits in that slot. Fits then. in the slots like that. And uh, we've cracked that nut off now. Good. So now that should come off. No, I'm not taking it off yet. Just wanted to get it loose. So that's half the battle. Right, what's next? So we've cracked that nut off. What's next? To slacken the bolts off here. This is on the alternator, right? Yeah, I'm just going back and just slowly taking bits off. Let's have a ratchet on the job. I'm going to whip that uh, pulley off. We don't take it to bits until we've timed it up. But we're still working on moving stuff at the minute. Here's a quick Lincolnshire interlude to see what is growing at the back of the house. Uh, it's cabbages this year. I've just been looking at the produce growing at the back of the house. Ah, uh, good man. What are you doing? Ah. Taking photographs. Yes, I know where to put that belt on. Oh, I'm disappointed that you've used your mobile phone to take a picture. I know, I'm embracing technology. And, uh, Top tip. Not a piece of cardboard. I'm hanging that on there the same way as it fits on the car, so I'll put it back the same. Does it matter? I don't know. So, so what, you've hung the belt on the direction that it came off. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Whether it matters or not, I don't know. Top tip. I shouldn't think it matters in the slightest, but... Uh... So not a top tip then? I've done it anyway. Now nail what... your colours to the mast, is it a top tip or not? Yeah. Top tip? Yeah, it's used to running that way, leave it and put it back that way. What's next? You've taken that belt off? Yes, and I'm going to take the altering nator off. Well, I'm not going to take it off, I'm going to... Tip it forward? Well, the brackets have got to come off because the brackets fit to the... front cover. Ah, so there it goes, look. No, it's got to come off at the bottom as well, look. Because that bit you can see it's fastened to is the front cover. So then but what you're saying is you don't want to take the alternator all the way off. No, not, not if I ain't got to. Save time. For those of you following the time check, this uh, project, we're about 45 minutes in now. And we've got the wheel off, we've got that belt off, we've got the uh, rocker cover off. Now we're getting the alternator off. Right, the alternator is. Why have I got to take the water pump? Unscrewed. Off. It must go in that front cover. So. So hang on a minute. You, you've just talked to me about a YouTube video you've watched, mm. in which the chap 
I don't know, took the air. He was an Indian gentleman, so I couldn't understand what he was doing, but he'd got an air compressor conditioning tool. It must have been a different engine. So he was taking the gas out of the air con? Yeah. We, surely we'd have to do that. Well, look, I couldn't do the job if I did, could I? No. So there's no need. No, OK. So we're not going to be touching the air con compressor? It doesn't look like it. I thought maybe I might have to chuck it to one side, but nope. Good news. It's got to come off because it's sort of... So we're looking at the water pump well, here. The instructions, sorry, it's got to tell me about It needs come to off. come off. Does it need to come off? Well. Yeah, it's attached to the case, look. This pulley needs to come off. Yeah, it can't come off yet. We need my timing marks. That'll be one of the last things I take off before I take the pulley off. It's a tiny sump, isn't it? Yes. I thought you were going to say it's a tidy sump. Come out the road. Tidy sump. I'm trying to think of a reason to use the Lidl inspection camera that we've bought. Some people have said if you hold down the camera button, oh dear, it films video. Um, oh, that's good then. So we, we've got some more stuff to do. Yeah. Thanks to everyone that's watched that video, by the yeah, way. It's on the channel. People have got them then. And so time to take some coolant out of it. Oh. Oh. What you found? I found that. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to make a mess. Yeah. Is there a tap on it? Yeah, there's a tap, but... Is it going to go straight onto the bumper? Yeah. Do you need a hose? What you need? No. What have you taken off? Taking this bit of plastic off. Ah, there's the piece of plastic. It's like a plastic splitter under tray, isn't it? Yeah, I'm taking the bugger off. Alan Milliard's got a new video out this weekend. I hope you've all watched it. All right, yeah. Thanks, thanks for plugging somebody else's channel and not ours. Ralphie Customs. <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not bothered about a bit of swearing, watch Ralphie Customs. What's Hub not got out this week? I've not seen any Hub nutting. I apologise. I think he's been on holiday. Well, lucky beggar. I think we need to point out to the good people that actually it's bank holiday when we're doing this. This is how we're spending our bank it's not holiday. Bank holiday. It is, it's bank holiday weekend. Oh well. Out comes the water. That's a Lincolnshire phrase. You're gonna get kicked if you lay in my road. Because I'm a bit clunch. You what? I'm a bit clunch. Clunch? I'll tell you what you can do. If you stand up, could you take the radiator cap off, please? Yes. Apprentice of the week. Top banana. Yeah. Take that plastic bit off, else it's going to whittle all over. Have you got the cap off? It's not off, it's just open. Do grub it. Coolant ASMR. Sure, people are interested in seeing some coolant whittling out. How what? are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. I'm waiting for it to stop whittling. Yeah, I've just spotted something. Yes, mate. I want to address it. Address it? Yeah, yeah. turn that over because that address is your address. Address the nation. Uh, the oil we've got is 5W40. Yeah, is, what is it? Is it uh, and A3 specification? It, it is, yeah, it's ACEA A3. Right, that's a good According start. According to the people on the internet, however, you need, or should be using, listed for them, 5W30 fully synthetic. Oh, crikey. Well, uh, ever, since, ever since global warming, they say, they say you should use more <laughs> thicker oil for running. I well, suppose the important We'll get the proper stuff from... Uh, is the 5W... Yeah, I think we should be putting 5W30 We'll get some proper in. stuff tomorrow. Yeah, well, I've got a big vat of 5W30, but... Um, we'll so do for those that, of you that have... No. So those eagle-eyed uh, people that have Thank spotted you. it at the beginning... Um, We've got the wrong oil, so we're going to use the right oil. It's that five bit that's important, to be honest, in my humble opinion. And don't put crap speck oil in. So it's time to time the uh, the engine up. Um, I think that's the way it goes. We've put a mark on the variable valve timing here, variable valve timing, and we need to. It's going to come and mark, line up with another one. Is that right? How's how much? Yeah, there should be another one come up from here. Right. And they'll line up together. So when they line up, I'll shout at you. Should be coming up now. It's not up yet. I don't see my marks yet. Oh, I wonder where my mark is on here. 
It's not there yet, did it? Not yet. So I've got a mark on the right-hand side one, which is now at the top. Yep. But the mark that you've shown me is sort of now at six o'clock. The right. one here, mark here. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other one's gone. Bums. What's that mean? I don't know yet. I think I might have to go look at the book. Right, hang on a minute. What's what have we done now then? So we've taken that pulley wheel off. <laughs> because did you realise you was talking rot or? No, yeah. So there's a mark on this wheel. No, I just I just asked my colleague to look see if there's any marks coming up anyway. You couldn't see it very clearly, so that's so I can see it, so I know roughly where I am. Lovely. So we've put a mark on the uh, on the wheel. I said to go to the workshop manual. That's why we've got a workshop manual. It's not 100%, but now the marks are slowly coming together. We'll get it uh, aligned. You can see them there. Yeah. Right, so we've got them marks in the right place, yeah. and that obviously means the engine is timed. We're somewhere near enough now. For people that don't understand the importance of why those marks, why we've just done what we've done, what is it that we've done? Just tell us. We've put it on TDC number one. So then when we put it together, the marked links on the chain, which I showed you earlier, yep. will be on there. So the engine is top dead centre, or well, the piston is top dead centre. Yeah. Uh, Not like your rover, you do at a safe point, you do these at the top. We're all right. We're all right. Just Out comes the special tool. We don't want that to move if we can help it now, any more than we're forced. Oh, and out move. comes the pulley. That's what we've got that loose now. We can take the pulley off. We'll soon find out anyway. It's not as though we're... Here it comes. Show us your pulley. Oh, nice. Crankshaft pulley. Crankshaft pulley. It's made in two pieces, look. It's got rubber in the middle. Oh. Harmonic balancing or something. It's oh, right, on. okay. Harmony. All I know is it's not on the car anymore. I spy a water pump that is in the way. It's coming off. It's not the water pump coming off. Oh, you're taking a sensor off. What's that? Speed and position. TDC sensor, whatever you want to call it. Off comes the water pump. There's another bracket got to come off here by the look of it. The water can be running out of it. Hey. Hello. There's a question I've got here, which is what the people on the internet are going to ask, so I'm asking it right now. Why are we not replacing the water pump while we're here? I don't think there's anything wrong with it at the minute. We can always... It's not as though it's uh, the hardest job in the world to do, so... Yep. If I need to do it, I can do it, can't So the rationale is this. It's got the original OEM Hyundai water pump on. It's not got any problems. And if we need to replace it, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. No, that's about it, son. That's the answer. I'm not going to start chucking money at it for no any reason. I'm just going to feel like it. Here comes the water pump. Oh, baby. A bit wet. Yeah. Show us your water pump. No, oh, that's, you know, that's lovely in there. Don't piss about my water pump. Hey, look at my water pump. I am looking at your water pump. Hey, That's beautiful in there. Good. Are you looking at my water pump? That's why we're not replacing the water pump. Because <laughs> I'm a tight old get. <laughs> yeah, it's not one of my cars. Put that with that so Hang on. That. Sorry, you've taken something off and I've missed it. What's that Tough. you've taken off? Oh, that's your speed position sensor thing. <laughs> yeah, so we've had some people on the internet tell us that the Napa timing chain kit we've bought is no good. Bums. And we should have bought Blueprint, and that the Napa kit will only last one or two years. So the good news is... I'm going to sell the bugger after a year then. Coming next year, we replace the timing chain on a uh, Hyundai i10. More content. It all depends how many miles you do in a year. Or yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Might not fix the bugger, that's the problem. That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so we've got those bits and pieces off, water pumps off. What's next for the evening? Um, we'll have my tea. Yep, that's it. End of day I'm one. I'm going to have a look at this chain. You're looking at my chain? 
It's your mum's chain. What are you doing with this chain? I'm going to put it in soak in a minute. Soaking in what? Engine oil. Ah, what, just to get it all lubricated and... Oh, that looks good. Yes. Can you wear that round your neck, please, like a wrapper? No, I'm not being there, that. <laughs> we don't do bloody stupidity in garages. This is a Hyundai garage, not a blinking... Proton garage. Proton garage. One there, look. On that link. And on that link. Perfect. So, hang on a minute. What, are, what is it you're marking up there? Ah, I'm looking at these. These marked links. One yeah. there and one yeah. there. And they go in line with the others. Well, no, there's some marks on the pull, isn't there? Yes. So, I don't understand, really. That chain, to me, looks like it's all the same. So why would you have marked links? Timing it up, son. There, there. Ah. On the bottom pull, there's a mark there, look. Now I understand. But you can't... The only time, they'll, they'll never light... You put them on, and then when you've turned the engine over, they're not there anymore. Yep. It only happens every so many thousand revolutions that it'll turn back in the right place again. So there's your engine chain. It's in a pot. What's this, having mushroom or chicken? Mushrooms, I think. There goes the oil. Oh, beautiful. There we go. Look at that. So that's in there to soak overnight now. And what is the purpose of soaking that? Well, I've put it on. It'll be inside all the links and what have you. It'll be pre-lubricated. So it ain't got to wait for turning around in the engine to... Good stuff. It's done, isn't it? Gorgeous. So we've been working on this now for... Uh, 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 an hour and a half. Yeah. And It's how... ready for the cover to come off. It's re and it's re so it's ready for the time Taking the bolts out for the cover, yeah. Cover to come off. It's your tea time, it's it my is. tea time. We're going to do some more tomorrow. Um, get the bugger finished tomorrow. Happy with what we've done tonight? Going to get the bugger finished tomorrow, Gromit. But happy with the progress we've done so far? Yes, mate. Yeah. Good stuff. I don't see why that Indian fella had took the compressor off. We're dropping the engine a little bit, just letting it sit down. Allowing some more water to drain out of it overnight. Right, you go get your tea, I'll go get my tea, and I, I will see you tomorrow. I shall put the blinking tools away first, son. Hey? I shall put the blinking tools away first. Uh, right, before we end day one, what's for tea? You know, I don't blinking well know. Well. But I am concerned that somebody says that Napa stuff's no good. Yeah, someone on the TikToks so has bit... uh, criticised Napa. No, he didn't criticise, he just said that he's blinking well had trouble with it. Well, no, he's criticised Napa. Yeah. Uh, he's been in the trade, what, 30 odd years and has had lots of problems with it. Yes. You've been in the trade, what, 52 years? Yeah, but I'm well, What's your professional opinion? Oh, I've never fitted it. Oh, a Napa, Napa springs on your uh, smart car. No, they were APEC. Oh. I've got loads of Napa boxes at one stage. Them was the springs that failed in about three seconds, were they? Uh oh! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bums. <laughs> right, good night. Right, I'll put an APEC one on next then. At least we've had a practice. <laughs> content! Yeah, more content, you bugger. Right, see you tomorrow. See you, mate. As ever, thank you for watching this video. Dad and I have selected a couple more videos for you that we think that you might like. They're here now. Just give them a click to watch them. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. It means a lot to us. Thank you.